So it's been over a year since I dropped my original 100 Rocket League tips video. And still to this day, every time I stream, the number one question I get asked is, Luke, do you have any tips to get out of insert rank here? So since I can't come up with any better answers on stream, this video is my ultimate answer to how to rank up for anybody stuck in the ranked ladder. In this video, I'll be continuing the tips counter all the way up from 100 to 200 in rank order. So basically, we'll start with sort of medium, like plat level difficulty stuff. But by the end, my goal is to get to more advanced GC1, GC2 plus tips. It's more advanced than any of the other Rocket League content out there right now. Also, huge thanks to all the guys in my coaching program who sent in clips for this video. If you didn't know, I run Rocket League's number one live training program called the Grand Champ Roadmap, where we take plat through champ rank players up to GC or SSL in just six weeks or less. At the time I'm recording this, we've got 89 players signed for our next launch. So I'm looking for just 11 more intermediate ranked Rocket League players who want to grab that GC or SSL title in the next six weeks. If that's you, DM me on Discord with the keyword now and we can talk details about coaching. Click the first link down in the description below. Otherwise, enjoy the video. All right, starting out with plat tips and we'll move all the way up to SSL. And just as a warning, I'm gonna go fast so we can get to the good stuff quick. So let's jump right in. Tip 101, start with the basics. The problem is when you try to learn advanced stuff too soon, you develop bad habits. If you instead learn stuff in a semi reasonable order, you'll form good habits and you'll learn way quicker. Tip 102, set good settings from the start. Trust me on this one, I currently use Rizzo's controls, and while they're not bad, they're definitely not the easiest to learn. Start out by looking at Liquipedia, and you can see a whole list of common pro settings and sort of model some of the popular ones. 103, video settings are pretty universal and can be copied without too much thought. Here are mine so you can pause and just copy them if you want to. If you are a comp player specifically, make sure you're playing on full screen with VSync off and definitely increase your FPS cap as high as your PC can output and your monitor can display. 104, sensitivity settings. Sense settings is something I absolutely would not want you to copy if you're new. Pros and higher ranked players in general tend to need to move faster and they can control higher sensitivity much better. So I recommend starting with a low sensitivity setting that you can actually control and then work up from there. 1.0 to 1.4 is a good place to start for ground sense and aerial sense. 105, dead zone settings are something you should absolutely not copy. Dead zone affects how much you have to move your joystick for the game to register that movement as an input. So when you're new, you want that to be high to start out. Start around 0.10 and work down to 0.05 or even 0.04. That's what I use as you get more comfortable and more mechanical. 106. Learn the difference between directional air roll and stick air roll. Directional air roll is mainly for longer aerials, whereas stick air roll is for quick adjustments and ground recoveries. So definitely pick a button for directional air roll, either air roll left or air roll right. Doesn't really matter. Once you're done, set it and forget it. We'll come back to air roll later. 107. Finally, for settings, make sure you bind joystick air roll and power slide to the same button. 108. Resist the urge to use car cam. Plat is all about avoiding picking up those bad habits that we were talking about earlier, so the quicker you can get used to using ball cam, the better. 109. There's no such thing as being mechanical in platinum. It's impossible. Focus on the basics like shooting, recoveries, and just hitting the ball hard, and you'll rank out of plat way quicker. 110. If you really want to get good fast right out of the gate, V1's Com told me that if he had to start from scratch, he would do an 80-20 split on free play training versus ranked. But realistically, if you want to get better and maintain your sanity, I think a 50-50 split between training and actually playing ranked is perfect. 111. In terms of what mechanics to learn first, I would start with car control and then move on to ball control. Car control mechanics are just skills that you don't need to touch the ball to develop, and ball control ones are ones that you do. 112. I recommend you learn half flips and wave dashes in free play pretty early on. Really try to drill basic recoveries and mechanics like these, because this is the stuff you're going to start using all the time in your ranked games. 113. Learn how to half flip both ways. A lot of people don't know there are actually two ways to half flip, but I recommend you learn both, because when you want to learn how to do other stuff, speed flipping, for example, later on, you'll learn much quicker if you understand how to half flip both ways. Trust me on that. 
114. If you can't stand being stuck on the ground, a good thing to learn early on is a proper fast aerial. So check out one of my tutorials to build your muscle memory the right way, and you're going to be so thankful later on. 115. In your first couple hours playing ranked, try to avoid sitting still or driving backwards for more than a few seconds. Always stay on the move. 116. If you're reversing for more than two seconds, it means you should probably be half flipping. And if you're sitting still for more than two seconds, it means you have time to grab small pads or pick up some boost. Get in the habit of always moving, not only because it's just better, but also because the more you move in your games, the quicker you'll get comfortable controlling your car. 117. Don't defend from inside your net. Defending inside your net in Rocket League is a lot like defending under the rim in basketball. You're just asking to get clipped on. Try to save the ball across your net so it lands in the corner instead of recentering back to the opponent. 118. A little bit random, but you can change the size of player name tags in your settings. For better visibility, I recommend increasing this to at least 150%. I personally use 200. 119. Training packs are your best friend as a new player. They're the quickest way to get a ton of reps in and practice the basics when you're just starting out. Number 120. Don't underestimate the in-game pre-built training packs. If you've never checked out these training packs, they're honestly the best way to learn the basics of shooting and air. 121. Just over a year ago, I sorted through a database of over 500 training packs and made a top three best training packs for every rank list on YouTube. To avoid repeating tips and repeating training packs in every section of this video, I'll just have that list linked down in the description below and you can watch it after you finish this one. Okay, so we've made it through Platinum, we've got the basics down, and now we can get into the more intermediate stuff. When you're in Platinum Diamond, you still have tons of room to improve the basics. So it should go without saying, all this more intermediate stuff that I'm gonna talk about should be done in addition to all the tips we talked about previously. 122. If you were just focused on booming the ball in Platinum, Diamond is the time to learn how to keep it close. If the opponent's too far up, boom it over their head, and if they're playing way too far back, control it. 123. Learn catches, carries, and flicks if you haven't yet. These are going to be your bread and butter to getting through Diamond and even Champ, so don't skip them. 124. Catches are probably best trained in training packs. Verge has a great pack for this, but if you just go and search up catch training pack, I'm sure you'll find a bunch of stuff. 125. Carries and flicks, on the other hand, can be trained super easily in free play. Use the up command on the controller d-pad here to spawn the ball on top of your car, and you can practice flicks really quickly that way. 126. Get good at the side flip flick specifically. Front flip flicks are great, but side flip flicks give you that direction change, so that way you can put the ball to the side and above your opponent. 127. Don't underestimate the basic double jump pop. Sometimes all you need to do is just pop the ball a little bit up above your opponent. And if you've ever watched a player like Flakes, you'll know that you can honestly use the double jump pump all the way through Grand Champ to beat players. 128. Now that you're in Diamond, one of the fastest ways to accelerate your training is to start doing workshop maps. 129. In my opinion, you should start with ground workshop maps over aerial ones. A good place to start would be Dribble 2 Overhaul or my new favorite, The Path by Dirty Dob. And then you can get into more aerial based ones like Lethemir's Rings. 130. Don't neglect bounce dribbling. I know I just said workshop maps are great, but one of their big weaknesses is they're really hard to practice bounce dribbles on. 131. Learn how to turn a bounce dribble into a shot. Specifically, using barrel rolls and diagonal flips can often generate more power than just front flipping through the ball. 132. Whenever you have time and space, try to go for bounce dribbles instead of carries. Because bounce dribbles can be used to beat multiple defenders, whereas a carry and a flick can usually only get past one. 133. To practice bounce dribbles, do the hot potato drill like I'm showing on screen here, using the right d-pad shortcut over in free play. Basically, all we're doing here is just rolling the ball at us and keeping the ball bouncing by timing and chipping the ball up every time it's on the up bounce. 134. Diamond is the time to start using power slide religiously. You should almost always hold power slide when you're landing to maintain momentum, because even if your car is just landing a little bit sideways, holding power slide will help save your speed and make your recovery more efficient. 135. 
Once you're in diamond, airplay is going to become much more important. Remember, just like on the ground, always try to hit the ball with your nose. That way you can boost through it and get more power with your aerials. 136, this should go without saying, but boost through your shots and boost through your aerials. I'm very much a believer you should learn how to hit the ball hard before you learn how to control it. And if you're not boosting through your shots, you're not improving as fast as you could. 137, wall shots. You're inevitably going to have to learn how to hit the ball off the wall. A great tip if you're struggling with wall play out of the gates is try to correct your car. That way your wheels are facing down first thing when you jump off the wall. And as you get better, you'll learn how to do without this. 138, jumping. Many people, even through the champ ranks, don't understand how jumping works in Rocket League. Tap to jump quickly and hold to jump for longer. 139, your car reaches max jump height after 200 milliseconds or a fifth of a second. 140, your second dodge timer will last for 1.25 seconds after you let go of your first jump for a max of 1.45 seconds if you hit max height on your first jump. Basically what this means is if you max out that first jump, you'll have the ability to use your second flip for longer than if you just tap the jump button. 141, get in the habit of saving your second dodge and using it to add a last second direction change or extra bit of power when you shoot. 142, just to drive this home, a lot of people underestimate the amount of height you can get before your second jump expires. If you hold down jump, you can reach a ball above the net and still have time to dodge into it. 143, learn how to flip cancel by pulling your joystick in the opposite direction after you flip. 144, every flip can be flip canceled in some way except for barrel rolls. 145, you can do partial flip cancels as well by canceling and then letting go of the joystick like midway through the cancel. This is kind of getting off topic. I don't advise you do this until GC1, but I guess I'm mentioning it early. 146, learn basic air roll shots. This will become increasingly important as you rank up and is one of the best things you can do in training packs. 147, if you're having trouble learning air roll shots, start out with joystick air roll instead of directional air roll. But the short summary is if you want to shoot the ball to the left, you want to pull your joystick down and to the right. And if you want to shoot the ball to the right, you want to pull your joystick down and to the left. Sort of like Lightning McQueen in cars. You know, you have to turn left to go right. Okay, I'm losing it. This is, this is a long one. 148, get your kickoff down. Kickoffs happen every game. So put four or five minutes inside free play training to get these down before you go into ranked because you're going to have to use them all the time anyway. 149. If you're having trouble ranking up out of diamond, remember to stay grounded. I think everybody in the lower ranks is honestly just trying to do too much because the truth is the three mechanics that I think are going to get you out of diamond are like fast aerials, good power shots, and maybe basic dribbles or flicks. Stick to these. 150. Finally, the golden rule of diamond is to remember you're still in diamond. Players at these ranks will make mistakes. And so the easiest way to win is usually just to let your opponents make those mistakes and minimize mistakes of your own. Play patient and you'll rank up. Okay, so you've reached the infamous champ ranks in Rocket League, and this is going to be the sticking point for most of you watching. So I'll talk a little bit about some extra mechanics that will help accelerate you through champ, but mainly this section will be about spotting and fixing those game sense mistakes that will keep you stuck in champ if you don't spot them. 151, spot your weaknesses. If you're in champ, it means you still have some weak parts of your gameplay. Usually most people in champ are good at the stuff they like doing and bad at the stuff that they don't. So you can either look at your own replays or get somebody else to look at your games and tell you what they think you could improve. 152, find a teammate. You'll probably be in champ for longer than you were in diamond or plat. And so finding teammates is super important around these ranks. Even just turning on voice comms to reduce double commits and things like that will lead to way more wins. So if you can find a teammate, start queuing with somebody. Or if you're still looking, you can join my free training discord. We're actually the largest Rocket League improvement discord. It's completely free to join and you can always leave if you ever want to. 153, learn speed flips. Once you get to high diamond, low champ, mechanic are going to become more essential and speed flips are no exception. This is going to be something you use not just on kickoffs, but a ton just moving around the field as you get higher and higher in the ranks. 154. There are two ways to speed flip, but if I'm being honest, I recommend you learn the flip cancel way as opposed to the air roll way. If you learn using your joystick and flip canceling, you'll be able to speed flip on both sides really easily. If you're having trouble learning the speed flip, I'll have a couple tutorials linked that I've made on the channel. 155. Pick a directional air roll. 
And since directional air roll is one of the hardest, if not the hardest skill to master, I recommend you start getting working on it as soon as possible. If you want to learn air roll, I've made like six different tutorials on this channel. So I'll link all the most positively reviewed ones in the description and on screen. 156. Continue using workshop maps through champ. I still think they're the fastest way to improve your mechanics if you're at these ranks. I know I talked about some of the ground ones, but my favorite aerial maps are Lethemir's Ice Rings, Speed Jump Rings 3 by DMC, and Hornet's Nest by DMC. Start with those three for sure. 157. Backboard Defense. If you're in champ, you've got to start getting comfortable on the back wall. Clearing the ball off the back wall is way more boost efficient, you can get tons more power, and most champs just don't expect you to be good at this. So you're going to want to learn one, how to clear the ball with power off the back wall, and two, how to intercept it or read the ball after it bounces. 158. Backwards saves. Just like backboard clears, you're going to want to get comfortable saving the ball backwards. You can start in training packs, or the D-pad is great for this. You can use, I think it's the down command, while you're shadowing and defending your net to shoot the ball at yourself and get a ton of reps that way. 159. Use the backboard to your advantage on offense. Remember, it's almost always easier to read the ball off the backboard as the attacker as opposed to the defender. A lot of the times, just hitting the ball above your opponent's net and then letting them panic aerial and miss will result in a completely open net. 160. Shadow defense and defensive spacing. As much as you might think you've got defense down in champ, most champ players still make a lot of mistakes on shadow defense. Remember, the goal of shadowing is to stay on the outside of your opponent if you can, and save the ball with momentum to your corner. 161. Maintaining possession. Possession is another huge area champs struggle. Just to be clear, possession doesn't just mean dribbling the ball, it also just means playing the ball to your team in general, as opposed to the opponents. So if you're ever awkward, look for situations where you can dish the ball off to your teammate or back pass and then recover and get back in the play. 162, stop booming the ball. Tons of players have problems with just sending the ball downfield. And the issue with booming it into your opponent's corners is that's where it's easiest for them to defend. Instead, if somebody's not pressuring you, start bounce dribbles and try to get the ball as close to the center of the field as possible for more powerful attacks. 163, corner play. This is kind of two tips in one, but try to be patient in your opponent's quarter and bait people into yours. Your own corner is the safest place to take a 50-50, and the opponent's is one of the most risky. Use this to your advantage by letting your opponents come to you and minimize the time you're over committing in their corners. 164. Stop going for carries and flicks. Don't get me wrong, carries and flicks are great for scoring against the last defender beating that last man back, but if there's more than one person on defense, a flick will usually only get past the first and then just turn the ball over to the second. 165. Stop dribbling in straight lines. When you dribble straight down the center of the field or just straight at the center of your opponent's net, it's really hard to get any direction change and you kind of invite the opponent to early challenge you. 166. Low 50s. Everybody wants to early challenge in champ, so if you can dribble on an angle effectively and spot when an opponent is early challenging you, the easiest way to beat that is just to go for a low 50-50. Unfortunately, the best advice I can get to learn low 50s is just to do it in ranked, make mistakes, and slowly get better at controlling how those go. 167. Don't hover or cherry pick upfield. Once you start to get better, you're going to want to get in the habit of waiting upfield for a pass or something from your teammate, but I promise it's just not coming. As much as the pros do this, you should not. Stay behind your teammates because the truth is, if you're below like GC2 or GC3, they need the backup. 168. Stop trying to force shots on net. A lot of getting through champ is outplaying people when they overcommit. Don't get so obsessed with shooting the ball on net all the time, just focus on getting those small beats and putting the ball around your opponent. Don't release pressure on offense. I see tons of champ players turn away off offense or go back to their own side to get corner boost when the opponents are struggling to stay alive. Try to stay up and maintain pressure whenever you can. 170. This goes hand in hand with the previous one, but don't ignore small pads. The better you are at picking up small pads, the longer you'll be able to stay in a play and the more of the field overall you're going to be able to cover. 171. Follow the 70-30 rule as second man. Basically, the 70-30 rule just states that if you're waiting for that center on offense or you're waiting for a pass, only move 70% of the way up to where the ball's gonna be passed and don't go any further. This keeps the field in front of you while you're waiting for the pass and make sure you don't have to backtrack if the ball gets hit over your head. 
172. Play patient even on offense. This is specifically targeted for champ players. I'm, I'm not going to claim that it applies to every rank, but I see a lot of champ players get scored on in breakaways or just open net situations because they overcommit on offense. Really only go if you're confident. 173. Stop pre-jumping. If you ever watch your own replays, pay attention to this because you should really stay grounded for as long as you possibly can before fast aerialing. Not only can you track a ball quicker on the ground, but if you stay grounded, you can turn back at any point when you realize you're beat. If everything else fails, be decisive. Mid-game is not the time to be self-critical, so if you're ever hesitating, just go with your gut and then review later. 175. Save your flip. Players throughout champ have the tendency of flipping into every ball they clear. This makes your play super one-dimensional. Practice chipping the ball up or even passing it to yourself off the walls before following the ball up and flipping into it. 176, this goes hand in hand with the last one, but in general, go for more two touch plays. The difference between the plat through champ range and the GC plus range is really how many touches players can get on the ball anytime they get it. 177, let your teammates go. There are so many situations where your teammate might be sitting right behind you and you're in an awkward situation, but you just go because you don't realize they're there. Keep tabs on your teammates, and if your teammate has a better angle or they're approaching it from behind you, let's say, let them take it. 178, maintain a patient play style. The truth is people at the champ ranks are inevitably gonna make a lot of mechanical mistakes. So play patient, capitalize on your opponent's mistakes and minimize your own. Okay, onto the final climb. Let's talk about ranking up through grand champ. First thing, I just want to be clear. Yes, I am still myself stuck in GC3, so I'm not going to try to preach like I know everything about how to get out of this rank, but I'm going to do my best to give you what's gotten me to this point, and I'll talk about what I've learned from pros and higher rank players that I'm actively doing to make the final push. 179, get your mentality right. The grind to SSL is the longest grind of all ranks. Even if you're getting better fast, it'll probably take at least six months. Focus on getting 1% better every day, and before you know it, you'll rank up. 180, hammer 1v1s. I actually went to Verge about a year ago when I was first stuck in GC1. And basically what he said is if you haven't done 1v1s up until Grand Champ, you probably need them to rank up. Playing 1v1 will show you your weaknesses and teach you how to convert goals and clutch up on defense when you inevitably get stuck as that last man back. 181, become the playmaker. Once you get to GC, you have to shift from the enabler to at least partially a playmaker. I know this personally because I got to GC just playing smart. And while it's great up until that point, you're going to find it really hard to win games if you're always relying on your teammate to be the one scoring. 182, get mechanical. As you climb through GC, the people you play against are gonna start to have really good mechanics. You need to master at least one of these next three aerial mechanics, in my opinion. 183, master double taps. Double taps are extremely important, not just offensively, but all around the field. As you get higher in the ranks, you need to be able to double tap to pass it to your teammates, double tap to score, or even double tap to clear a ball off the wall and stall time for your team. 184, master air dribbles. In GC+, you need to learn how to air dribble, not just in perfect setups off the wall, but also defensively off your backboard or even off the ground, as in like ground to air dribbles. A great way to practice these awkward air dribbles is just by using the up and then right command in free play to get quick air dribble setups. 185, master flip resets. Once you're in GC, I, th I think you've got to start learning flip resets. Just like with air dribbles or double taps, these open up so many escape plans for beating players last second. Plus, once you learn how to combine flip resets with other mechanics, like say doing a backward air dribble into a flip reset, that's how you become really hard to defend. 186, to learn all these mechanics faster, if you haven't yet, start using the free play checkpoint plugin. I get tons of questions about how I spawn the ball midair in free play or like repeat shots over and over again, and this is how I do it. I have a full tutorial on this in another video, but basically this plugin allows you to freeze frame a shot and replay it from a specific point in time. With mechanics like flip resets and double taps, where the hardest part usually comes at the end, this plugin will allow you to target that sticking point and actually learn the mechanic way faster. 187. 
start faking. Once you do show that you can pull off some mechanics consistently, people will have to start to respect you. And that's when your gameplay really opens up. I was talking with Com from V1 and he kept going on about how the threat is often greater than the execution. That goes for flicks, cuts, flip resets. As you get higher and higher in the ranks, the potential for fakes becomes bigger. 188, get good at backboard goal line defense. If you don't get really good at saving aerial attacks off the backboard, you're gonna be stuck on defense the whole game at the really high ranks. Be really, really careful about conserving your boost and always leaving a little bit in the tank to follow the ball up on defense. 189, learn the squishy save. Yes, sometimes this mechanic is good for saves, but honestly, the reason I recommend you learn it is because it's just good for conserving boost and maintaining momentum all around the field. You can use it to make saves in your net, but it's also just great for recovering through the opponent's net and getting back to your side of the field off of offense. 190, master delaying your flip. Delaying your flip, as in like chipping the ball up and then saving that flip on a shot, for example, is one of the best ways to get a last second direction change and fool the defense. Start building muscle memory for exactly how long you can save your flip, both on defense and on offense. 191, learn any mechanic that will increase your speed. At a certain rank, Rocket League becomes a lot about just quick beats, outplays, and that 1v1 skill we talked about earlier. 192. Get good at neutral jumps specifically. A neutral jump is just using that second dodge without a directional input to propel your car in whatever direction that your hood is facing. Learn how to combine this with air roll to become much more speedy and unpredictable during dribbles, in the air, and really anywhere on the field to make your movement that much faster. 193, become an outlet for your teammates to pass to. This is one of those tips where I go completely 180 on what I was teaching earlier, but yes, it's okay to cheat up and cherry pick in the higher ranks. Yes, this is risky, but it can pay off in the right situations. 194, cheat more aggressively. Bad tip for low ranks, good tip for high ranks. As you get better and better, your teammates are gonna become more controlled with their 50-50s. So if you ever notice the play is slowing down and most likely a 50-50 is just gonna play right out to the side or be pretty weak overall, you wanna cheat as close as possible as the second man to be the first to that ball. 195, prioritize demos. As you're rotating through the play, always look for opportunities where you can pick up demos. The main place you want to look for demos is when you're rotating out of the play, let's say through the corner or across midfield. A good demo can be the difference between losing possession and actually just a free goal. 196, use your camera stick. There are not many ways to get an unfair advantage in Grand Champ these days, but if I had to pick one thing that most Grand Champs still don't do to this day, it's actually use their camera joystick to watch the play. 197, stop over flipping. Rapid taught me that the higher rank you get, the quicker every play is going to change. In most cases, it's better to just always be grounded. That way you're ready for the ball and you're ready to turn if there's a change in direction of the play. 198, watch high level gameplay. I'll be honest, watching first killer as a plat isn't gonna do much for you, but watching him when you're higher ranked in say GC1, GC2, GC3, you're gonna actually start to pick up on a lot of the little things pros like him do that set them apart. 199, learn awkward setups. Being able to take the ball from an awkward setup to an actual like controlled air dribble down the field is incredibly useful and it's one of the only things you can do to catch players off guard in Grand Champ. Tip 200, stop playing a certain play style. Yes, I know I said you can get to GC playing patient, but to get to SSL, every match is different. If you've been off the ball for a while, it doesn't mean you deserve to push up and get the ball. Or if your teammate been on defense for a while, it doesn't mean you should try to force the ball off the field onto offense without any boost. So things like always rotating back post, always turning wide that will work at low ranks often crumble as you get to the higher ones. <sighs> okay, we're done. That was 200, hopefully, game-changing Rocket League tips. I don't know. But before I sign off, more important than any of these tips that I gave, the number one thing that actually matters more than any of this is just to try to have fun. I know it's probably not what you want to hear, but the truth is, all these things are ways to get better at Rocket League. But no matter what you do, you're not going to get good at this game overnight. The best thing you can do to guarantee you get better is to just find stuff that you actually enjoy doing that gets you better. The list of tips I wrote here is actually 
18 pages long on my Google Doc, and it's been five days since I started recording this video. So if you could do me a solid, share this video with one of your plat, diamond, or champ friends who needs it, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you want to get GC or SSL, this is what I do for a living. So DM me on Discord with the keyword below, and we can talk details about coaching. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace, guys.